Hello colleagues and welcome to this video on recording lectures with Snagit, a rather meta video in which I make a video to show you how to make a video. Okay, so what is Snagit for? Snagit is software um, called screen capture software that allows you to record a non-interactive asynchronous video lecture like the one you are watching. It's not a live lecture, it's videotaped. Students access it on their own time asynchronously um, and watch it uh, usually using Quirkus. Um, so in this video I will show you how to make a video something like the one you're watching um, and you will do the following things. So you'll use this software uh, snag it to record yourself lecturing. So you talking like I am talking into a video camera and presenting slides which is why I have this sort of meta setup here. Um, you don't have to use slides but you can. Um, using Snagit to perform basic editing on your video, uh, uploading your video lecture to U of T's My Media site where it is protected from the outside world and can only be viewed by users with active UTAR IDs, uh, and finally I will show you how to post a link to the video on Quirkus. So first step, downloading and installing Snagit. So to do that, go to this convenient link that uh, the university has put together for us. This link is in the description below this video and will have been emailed to you. It takes you to this page which provides you all the instructions you need in order to go to this um, website where you will log in with your UTOR ID and, and you will get a code and enter the code in the installation process. But I won't dwell on that too much since the instructions are so clear. So now let's go ahead and record a lecture with Snagit. So when you get the program open, you'll see a window something like this. You can see that I've been using Snagit for a while. Some of my old videos are in there. The key button for you for getting started is this capture button up here in the top left. So I will click that. It opens up and you have numerous selections here. Make sure it's on video. Make sure your selection is full screen. You can also define just a region of your screen. So you just want to record a small section, not the whole screen. But for the most part, full screen will be the easiest thing to do. Um, make sure your webcam is on so that um, you can be seen lecturing in addition to showing um, slides if you're using some. Preview an editor, capture cursor, record microphone, record system audio. These are all good things to have turned on. So once you do that, click capture. This will just kind of verify your settings, make sure you've got the right microphone turned on. If you see a little um, uh, audio thing bouncing down at the bottom, that's good. That means it can hear you, and then so you hit record. Three, two, one, and now, so this is what it looks like when you're recording a lecture. I bet my audio is going to be unsynced because I'm doing a screen capture of a screen capture, so I apologize, but this is now what it looks like for you to be making a video. The key button is this one down here. This allows you to toggle between what's on your desktop and your face. Okay, So the main setup for lecturing um, is either just your face like this, so it's just capturing the webcam and you talk, or if you want to use lecture slides, a PowerPoint, what I would do, so I've got a PowerPoint open here, I would go into the presentation mode uh, for PowerPoint, and so now when I toggle I'm going between my PowerPoint slides and me lecturing. So this is a great way to lecture. I quite enjoy this. It's quite a bit like lecturing in real life. So when you want their attention on you, you have the webcam on. And when you want their attention on a slide, um, looking at the text, reading the text, and then back to you for close reading. And it creates a nice kind of um, visual beat. And the students will, will, I think, be able, it'll break up the monotony slightly to have uh, an alteration between your face and the videos, and you'll get quite used to it. Okay, I'm going to hit pause, stop the recording for a little bit, um, and move on to the next section of the video. An important note on length. Um, when making videos in Snagit, keep the length to an hour or less. This is because the files that you're making become large and you can easily crash the program, which is bad because you've been working very hard for hours and suddenly it's all gone. It's happened to me. It's frustrating. So if you want to talk for more than an hour, just make separate videos. Three hour lecture, three separate videos. Upload them individually in the manner that I'm about to describe. So I have two quick sections on editing. So first is something that I like to think of as preemptive editing. So when you are using Snagit, 
and you are recording your video, you go into capture mode. I'll show you how to do that again. I think it's useful to use this pause button down here to break up your own, just for your own purposes, to build in some editing. So say you want to talk for half an hour or an hour. Um, plan on talking for two or three minutes, five minutes, and then hitting pause. So you'll see the clock, clock stops ticking down here, and now you're not being recorded. And then you can take a break, gather your thoughts, look at your slides again, sort of remember what point you're going to, and then when you're ready to go again, hit the record button. So now you're live again. This will be saved onto the file that's eventually uploaded to my media, and then pause again. So build some structure in, and you won't have to do as much editing afterwards. Now, a word about post hoc editing or editing after the fact. Snagit does have some basic capabilities for doing this. Um, so when you're done with your video, inevitably your face will look like this when you make a video. <laughs> and you'll just have to, you'll maybe want to edit that away. Um, so you'll see all the videos you've made down here. These are the two practice videos that I just made. Um, you can see a nicer selection overview by clicking on, on the library button. But when you go back to editor, you'll see that there's some basic editing capability here. So what you want to do with these little, um, the, the start and end things allow you to grab a certain portion. So let's say I just want to grab the part where my eyes are closed and I look like Frankenstein and remove it. See, I can like drag quite a bit and then whatever is blue, I can cut. And then if I want to grab a part in the middle, say, and cut this out, I can cut that out. And then maybe there's some dead air at the end that I want to cut out and then I cut that. And so now my video has gotten shorter and I've done some basic editing. Just one more quick note about editing in Snagit. So once you've done your edits, you've trimmed off the bits you don't like, removed a face like this, you're happy with what you've got, um, go and hit save. Otherwise the changes you made won't be saved. And you can say replace if you're happy to replace the original version. In a minute you'll see that I upload a version that still has me looking terrible at the beginning because I forgot to hit save. Let that be a lesson when you make your edits, hit save. Okay, so we've got the lecture and we're ready to upload it to my media. So um, in Snagit, um, you might be still in the editor view, click onto the library view and you'll see, um, let's say I wanna take this video I just made here uh, and upload it. So I'm gonna right click on it um, and or uh, on a Mac, sometimes that could be a, a control click so share file will allow you to save it in a normal way. Um, just put it somewhere you remember on your computer. Um, reveal in Finder for Mac users is maybe a slightly easier step, but it's the same thing. It just shows you where on your computer you've got the file saved. All right, then go back to that first page that I showed you, the one with installation instructions, and it has a link to my media. So you'll be prompted to, um, to log in um, in order to upload it. So you'll see here, this is, it's a U of T website. It's only accessible to U of T students and faculty or people with active UTOR IDs. So it is protected from the outside world unless you decide that you want to share it more broadly. You'll see here is a bunch of videos I've made, some lectures from my classes that I've shared, um, earlier drafts of this video. Um, so when I want to upload a video to my media, I click New Upload. Um, I'm going to click on the, um, I'm going to try dragging it in here. And that worked, so that's the easiest way maybe to drag it in, but you can also click browse and find where you saved it. And I'm gonna upload this file. When your video is finished uploading, you'll see this little screen saying that it's currently being processed. And for a longer video, this will take a while. For a shorter video, it shouldn't take very long. So if I just reload this page, um, there it's being processed and I can now work with it. So um, click on it take you to the page, you can view it from here uh, if you like. <laughs> Maybe you want to edit it some more to take that terrible face off the beginning. Um, if I click share, this is how I can now share it. So I'll now show you um, how to um, share the link on Quirkus. So that takes us to this page right here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to first just, this is the link, I'm gonna copy the link. So in Quirkus, you can do a lot of different things with this. You could just email the link to your students if you wanted. The solution that I took for my um, modern fiction class was to create a page and then to put links on the page. So let's say I wanna make um, a new page that is called 
video lectures. So one thing you could just do is say lecture number one, how to make a Snagit lecture, and then highlight it, add a link, and then paste in the thing that we just grabbed over here and say insert link. And so if you save that page, what your students would see is just a link and the link takes them to the lecture. That's fine, that works very well. If you want to um, get a little bit fancier and embed a video in the way that I did, so they on the page they'll actually see the video. Um, don't, you don't have to do this, but if you're interested, here's how it works. Um, you copy this code underneath, the embed code, um, and then you go to HTML editor, hit enter it wherever you want to put the video, and then paste that one in there, and then say save. And so now what uh, they will see is um, the actual video embedded on that page. So those both work. All right, so in this video we have used Snagit to record a lecture, used it to do some basic editing, uploaded it to my media, and posted a link on Quirkus. So we are done. Go off and make your own videos.